Hi, welcome to Go on the Run. And today we're looking at part three of our WebSocket to do web application. So let's jump in. So I figure before we start looking at what we want to do in part three, we should get our bearing. We should look back at what is it that we want to accomplish and what we've done so far. So we started off with a basic to do application and we wanted to be able to do simple things like be able to create and delete to do. And we also, of course, want to list our to do. So we did that in WebSocket part one. Then we extended that application to support multiple user and that was WebSocket part two, where we showed that oh, if a user logged in more than once from different clients, they can see the same list um, of to do's that they have. However, we did not have the ability to simultaneously update all clients for that user. And tutorial number three is use WebSocket to push changes and keep them in sync across multiple clients for the same user. So this is going to be real time syncing of our to do list across clients. If the user makes a change in one client and they're logged in on one or more other clients. So essentially we're going to have our server. We'll have a user connect from some browser or, you know, we'll call that client one. And if the same user connects to the server from another browser, so we'll call this client two, but the client here is the application being used. And then the user can optionally connect again from a third place. Now we we're not going to limit how many places the user can connect from. I just want to illustrate what's going to happen by having three connection for the same user. What we want to happen is if that user was to create a to do and send it to the server, what we want is the server to then make a copy of that update and send it to each one of the other clients that the user have connected with. Okay. So, so what do we really have to keep track of? Well, we have the user connection from client one to the server. We also have a different connection client two, and then we have the third connection. So each time the user connects to the server from a different client that represents a different connection. So now we need to manage multiple connection for the same user, just as we manage multiple to do list for different users. I have a user, let's say Bob, and he has a connection and maybe he just connected from one client and Sam connected from two clients. And so Sam's connection is connection two and connection four. I think using a map of strings to what I call a connection slice will allow us to implement exactly what we want because once a, an update or an operation comes in on one connection, we can then, we know which user send that operation in because we've already fixed our code so that each operation is, you know, tagged by the user who's submitting it. Then we can certainly look up all their connections if they have any and send the updated to do list to that user. So let's jump in and take a look at the code. Now that we have an idea, what is it that we want to accomplish? So I am at my terminal and I'm in the WebSocket project directory. If you remember what I did was I said that we'll use the WebSocket directory and just tag it. Tag our work because any node based type of framework download a number of packages. So instead of making copies of the directory as I was doing before, I simply create a tag. Okay. So I'm already in my client directory. So um, let's start up our backend or server. And this is without us making any change because we want to see what we have. And we say AU run minus minus watch. And so this should start our client here in a bit. Okay. And it's running and I have a few browsers already running. So let's see if I refresh this. So that's our to do. If I refresh this guy, I also have a third client here. Okay. So if we log in as, let's see, it doesn't matter which one we use, Bob, we do log in. As you can see from the back, back end, we have our hello and the list was sent to Bob. He hasn't created any to do yet, but let's say to do one. 
and add that to do so that's Bob's to do and if I go to another client log in as Bob and I can see the one to do and the problem we're trying to solve in this to do is now if I remove this to do notice how even though Bob is connected from this other client he does not get an update in the second client that the to do was removed and let's say Bob created another to do here for whatever reason now you see as how the old to do one was replaced but still over here on a second client there isn't an update of this new to do okay so that is a problem we're trying to solve and this seems like a back-end issue only so fortunately we only have to work on the back end so let's do that and like i said i think that what we need to do is have this idea of a connection and create a map of connection here you can see we have to do's as a list of to do's and we maintain in our database a map which is a user a map of string to to do's and our string here is a username so let's just add um, a concept of a connection a list of connect a connection and then a list of connections and then we'll go from there so let's see what do we get from the websocket We'll see what we get from the Gorilla Mux package in terms of connection. We upgrade our request to a WebSocket. What we get returned is a pointer to a connection. So it seems like what we need to do is just have a slice of these connections. But our program is getting a bit long so to put in one file. And so let me take this opportunity to just break things up a little bit. And so I'll cut this from here. And I'll create a file here called types.go. And this, well, I want this to be in my server directory. And it's in the same package. And let's put our type here. And so our program should still work the same, except I can still do go run and types. Everything is still working. And let's make sure that we know what where this connection type is coming from is this from the net package or is it from gorilla mux package itself so let's click on uh, upgrade function and we see that it returns connection and so click on that and here's connection struct and let's see it's from the websocket package so Let's go here. Back to our main application, we need a map of username to connections. So we can duplicate this and call this, well, this is the database of to-dos, we could think of it, and this is our database of connection. And instead of to-dos, we can simply say we have connections. Okay, so this will allow us to keep a mapping between the users and their connection this database will allow us to do a mapping between their user and their to-do list so we can have two set of databases if you like so okay i don't like the, the way this is named so instead i'll call this database i'll call it user connections Because we're using this throughout our program, I probably want to do something like this. Okay. What I was thinking about doing was actually creating a new type that represent a to do and a connection, and then just have a database that maps to that. So instead, do something like this. Something like that. And instead of having two sets of maps, I would simply have one map. And so I'll say this is a map of clients struct. And then now I can put this back as database. Now, of course, we, we have to make a few changes. So let's save changes there. And now we're not making to do's, but we're making a map of clients. And it's important to note what's happening here. If you look up on a map, you get a client, which means you get a struct object and if you try to append this to this slice you cannot change 
the value of this slice and therefore you wouldn't be able to update it. But I'll demonstrate this first for you and show you that it doesn't work and then I'll show you how to fix it. So I have this and we have to do a map of clients. Here we are not getting to do's. We can actually just do database that And here, when we try to get the to do, well, that is this. If we want to add a to do, we want to try and update the to do that is in our database. So this seems like we should be doing. This is what it seems like we should be doing, right? But this is not going to work. But I'll show you how to fix it. So at least let's go with what we think we want to do and then look at the problem later. And then of course, once we've done that, we've updated the to-do we want. So now we just return. Okay, makes sense. Now you're getting a warning here and this is cannot assign to struct field. And that's because if you think about it, once we do this look up, we get a client object and that client object has the field to-do. And if we were allowed to append and then override it, that would be a problem because now we're trying to override a field member that's in a struct object that's being managed by the database. Instead, what we really want to do is have a pointer to a client and that would solve this problem. But let's continue and fix this one also. So here we have the same thing because here we actually need to replace that to-do list, we'll definitely need the ability to update the to-do member of a struct. This is going to work the same. And then now we assign it to to-do return attempt to-do. Okay, so let's fix our database type here. So we want to do this is a pointer to a client. And of course, we're making a pointer to a client. And let's see what happens now. Okay, so let's review our code. Now, there's still a problem, but let's run our code as it is, see what the problem is, and then uh, we'll fix that. So right now, all we have done is transform our code from using map to to-dos to a object that represents both connections and to-dos, but we haven't done anything with connections yet. Okay, so let's just see if so far we have broken what we have. So refresh. And so we see we have an error already. Um, our program crashed and here's the nil reference, right? And that is because when we look up the, a user, we have a pointer to a client. And so that is nil. So you always get the default value when you look up in a map when you do not have an existing object. So what we need to do is when we log in before we get the list of to do, what we should do for hello, because we know hello means that the user is signed in, or they're sending in on that client, we should do something called a login. So let's do say do login for this user with this username. We already have the username. Yeah, let's see if that works now. So do login uh, function. And what happened when we say do login? Well, if the user, this is their login, so we should add their connection, actually. Yes, we need to add their connection to the list of um, connection that we already have. So we should add connection.
Yeah, this connection is C is a pointer to a WebSocket connection. What we want to say is if nil or you know if database of this username that's been the user's being logged in is equals to nil, then we want to be able to create a new client object. And then, of course, once we have a client object, we don't have to create one. But once we get to this line, we either have created one or one existed. Now we can append this connection to that client object. So we can say so now we've when the user connects, when we get that hello message, we ensure that we have a valid client object and we append their connection to that list. Now, when we, so what is our method complaint in here? Our dual login. So dual login connection, connection, what is it? Undeclare username. So what do we call our, oh, so we don't have the username here, so let's do that. Let's use this one place only. Okay. Alrighty. All right. So, okay. So that's what we'll do the login for us. And of course we haven't changed anything else. So let's see if this works. So come back here, stop this and rerun it. Command R refresh login again. Okay. And now we didn't crash. And then let's try to add it to do. Okay, and that works. We get back our to do. And let's say we remove to do. So that seems to work. All right, but we still haven't solved the problem of if this user logs in multiple times. So let's create another to do. Let's refresh and log in as Sam. And we see our to do, but remove it, still have the problem. But at least now we know what's happening in the back end is once we log in from multiple browsers, we should be adding because we have this hello. John, when you say the hello message, you do a login. We should have multiple connections. So what we need to do then is after we have an updated list, here is where we need to say, you know what? Let's send this to do, this update to do to all the connections. We can iterate over the list of to do's and just call this method. So. I'll instead of since we have we're pretending that we have a database where all this stuff is stored, I'll call a method called get connections. Get connection for this username. And then if you have a connection for this user, you get some connections for this user, iterate over those connections and just call write JSON. And of course, we already have the client response, so this should work. Okay. And now the only thing remaining is for me to write this get connection method. As a slice. Okay. And then connection. Okay. See. All right. So let's see if this works. Now, one of the things I can possibly do is print out how many connections I have.
So this is what I want to print out. Okay. So if that's not too much, then let's go back, close this, rerun our application, and let's see if it works now. So I refresh, log in as Sam. I create a to-do. And let me open up another browser and connect there also. So I refresh, connect as Sam, and See, it says updating two clients for user Sam. So already, this is not surprising. We expected when Sam logs in, he should get an update. What we want to see is if we do a remove, that it remove in the other browser. And even before I finish talking, that is exactly what happened. And we can see it works from either clients. So what about if we have a third client? And as you can see, it works across all three browsers. So I had this problem with Safari where I think it's not updating the controls properly, but as you can see, it's updating properly on the other ones. So this is not an over application problem, this is Safari. All right, so I think we have accomplished our goals, right? We able to synchronize our updates across browsers. And the only thing left to do to make sure we didn't break anything is to make sure that we still have multi-user support. So let's Sam login, uh, let's refresh so we can get that login and do Sam and create to do for Sam. And Let's refresh here because he's still logged in and Bob and create a to do for Bob. And we could see those to do are kept separate. Now, here's the problem go back, refresh here, and again log in as Sam. Now you can see it says updating five clients for Sam. We only have three browser clients. So, how is it that they have five? That's because we've logged in several times to Sam close our connection for Sam, as you can see, it says close going away. So there's a detection when we refresh or we disconnect for a certain user. What we need to do is handle this, connect, this disconnection. So after looking at the documentation for Socket, and I encourage you to read it, if you look up for the Gorilla Web Socket, how to deal with clients that disconnect, where was it? Uh, there is a, so go to index. There is a close error and that's the message we're seeing. We can check if our connection is closed. We can set a close handler. Uh, where is that? Yep, close, set close handler function and if you read this though, it will tell you here that it says the connection read method returns a close error when a close message is received. Most applications should handle close messages as part of their normal error handling. Applications should only set a close handler when the application must perform some action before sending a close message back to the peer. Now we're not sending any close message back to the peer and we're not specifically handling any close requests. So, after experimenting with this a little bit, I notice a few things. So for example, if you set the close handler, a function for this, and clients disconnect, sometimes it's called and sometimes it's, is not called based on which browser you use. So I've done that test already and so I can show you that. Um, so let's copy this and I'll show you how I dealt with it. Um, so we want to set a close handler. So essentially, Every time we create a new connection, which is here, up oh, there we go. So before we go into processing messages, only when we connect successfully, we want to set a close handler. And then of course we have to return an error. I never killed my application. Ah. Let's rerun it. So that test wasn't a good test. So let's refresh and log in again. 
Sam refresh login Sam okay so two clients of this for Sam okay good so what I want to test now is what happens when I refresh here or that connection closes and as you can see it says 106 abnormal but my close handler that I register was not called let's see what happened here when I refresh in Firefox notice my handler was called this is my handler called and then I got this message and notice the code that I got when we got a close from Firefox is different than the code that we got from Safari and let me see if Chrome gives us the same error message so I'll refresh and then log in as Sam and so now we should have three connections and then let's disconnect from Safari by refreshing and notice I get the same 101 and so Firefox and Chrome are behaving the same way. Now, I don't know which one is correct or not, but Safari is behaving very different. And because my close handler is not being called reliably for each for different browsers, what I decided to do and reading the, the documentation where it says the application should handle close normally as part of their operation, what I decided to do instead was to say what happened if a connection is closed and we try to write to that connection. So instead of trying to do this, I don't set a close handler. Instead, I check to see if when I write, because when you do write JSON, it returns an error. So if that connection is closed, it should fail when we write. I want to handle this error or remove the connection, right? So uh, you can choose, so let's say remove, um, do a logout. Now we can check and see what type of error it is to make sure to actually use a login out or something. But we'll say if we cannot write that connection, we'll consider that user a logout. So we want to do logout for the username and for this connection. Make sense? So that's going to allow us to iterate through our list of connection and remove that user. And so that is going to look very much like we did here when we remove a to do and copy this code and paste it here. And so this is our do logout. That's it. That's all we have to do So it looks very much the same. So let's see why is this complaining? Um, Undeclare do logout. Um, do logout. Ah, there we go. O U T. O U T. There we go. All right. Save our changes. Uh, let's go rerun it and see what we get. So we run our code. So refresh. Login. Same. We have one client and an update for one client to one client. We'll again refresh and Sam. So we have two clients. Great. And let's do create a to do. And now let's refresh from Safari. So that's essentially a logout. And so we see the connection was closed abnormally. But now let's try and send an update here. So if we remove from here, you'll see it says updating two clients for Sam. Doesn't seem like this worked, but let's try again. Let's remove again and we'll see, oh, still two clients. So for whatever reason, our write is not failing, but let's make sure our, our logic is correct. So what we want is to do a write and if it's not equals to null, not equals to nil, then basically log out a user. So we're not failing on the write when we loop over those connections. All right, let's try it from another browser. Let's do refresh. Here. So we have a close going away. 
and let's do try to all right let's try from another so this is yet another login if we were to log in and so to do and so notice how now it says updating one client for same so this seems to at some point it seems to have worked because now we should say it's three let's see if this is true and so let me log back in as sam so we have two connections for sam and so if we are to do yep so that's two connection let's do a third one so we log in we can do things across all three browsers and so let's do from firefox let's essentially log out so we have three connections let's log out from firefox and now it says connection going away if that is true then when i toggle here it still says three but notice if i keep the first change i make it does not detect the error but the second change it detects that oh there's one less so my logout was called eventually it just wasn't called the first time we tried to write to that connection. It seems to delay the, when it detects that there's an issue. So let's try it again. Let's log out from Safari. So we've logged out. So we should only have one user connection now. And notice again, the first time I tried to send something, it didn't occur on the very first time after I log out, but the next time it did. And so it's, it is working correctly with, you know, air quotes which means that um, for some reason, the WebSocket connection doesn't detect the very first time after you, it says it's logged out and the connection is closed abnormally. When you try to write, it doesn't detect it then. It's on the second try, then it detects the failure, then we're able to do the logout. So that at least means that our, our connection list wouldn't keep growing. Um, I don't think this is a major problem. It's still sort of a weird thing um, the other thing that is weird that I demonstrated is even when we could register a connection handle, handler, how the two browsers are handled differently. So maybe that might be something that if it's somehow fixed, then because our connection handler did not get called for an abnormal connection from Safari with the, when the error code was 106. Um, so even if you register a connection handler, you still wouldn't be able to handle a disconnect from safari and so you might be able to handle a disconnect from firefox and so on much sooner but it seems like doing this sort of just doing it this way you eventually get it to handle it consistently at least three, across the three browsers i've tested here um the three browsers i've tested here and even though it's like a delay until the second um message you go to send what does that mean if you were writing an application and you had thousands of users well, I don't think it's a big deal. I thought about it and I thought, well, okay, let's say you had an application with 100,000 users connected and maybe 20% of those um, were the same users. So really it's just 80,000 users connected and um, 20 of them, 20,000 connected a second time or one or more times, something like that, right? So, and then um, you're able to manage and connect and um, sync across them. And then some of them might have locked out from one of their clients. Well, yes, you'll not be able to detect that oh, you're still holding on to that client for a little bit, but assuming that the user is actively updating and so on, then you will detect it fairly soon. So I don't think it's a major problem, but it is something to be aware of. That's why I wanted to show you because it may come into play within your application. All right, so I think that's it. If you find documentation or something, some other way to handle the disconnect immediately, um, certainly let me know. Of course, we can do a explicit logout and that would do it for us. We can actually send from our client, we can put a logout button that actually says, oh, I want to log out. The way I'm doing the logout is to say, if there's an abnormal connection disconnect from that client, basically the client refreshes or browser closes or something like that. Um, if we put a logout button after we log in, we show a logout button, then we can be able to send that message and that would take care of it immediately. All right, take care. See you in the next video. Thanks for your support. Bye.